and welcome to Folk from the Boat. I hope you are very well. I have a, a convoluted story about today's song, so I'd best get on with it. And it starts, well, initially it starts in the early 1600s with a manuscript from the time of King James VI, which I shall probably come to, Six of Scotland that is. And in 1838, the Bannatyne Club, which is a club of honourable Scottish gentlemen, commissioned um, a copy they could easily read of a collection of music from, from the time, it says, from the time of King James VI. You don't need to know all the detail because you're going to get some detail. Okay, I've been leafing through this, as I often do, and I found a lovely tune called I Love My Love for Love Again, which I thought might work rather nicely on the hurdy-gurdy, and it probably, probably will in a future episode. But the notes to it, I thought I would read to you because it's a bit of information I didn't know on the song Jenny Nettles. Jenny Nettles is also a tune, of course, it's also a reel. Um, but she was, she was a person. I will read you what the Bannatyne Club, in their wisdom, have to say about Jenny before we sing it. The words of the song, I saw you Jenny Nettles, have no merit, poetical or otherwise, to recommend them. It must therefore have been the music which cast its magic spell over the memory of this person, for Jenny was not formed of the stuff that dreams are made of, but a real character of flesh and blood, a native of Falkland and Fife, and flourished in the early part of the last century. And her fate, though sufficiently melancholy, was in reality no more than what has happened to many a hapless maiden before and since her time, whom the genius of song has passed over in silence. Hmm. She was betrayed by a gay deceiver who figures under what we presume to have been the fictitious name of Robin Rattles, and committed a certain rash act very common in these cases. The scene of, of the catastrophe was about a mile from Falkland on the side of the road leading to Strathmaglow, and the tree upon which she was found suspended, one of the last survivors of the King's Forest, was in existence and continued to be pointed out by the neighbours till within these few years. They also tell a story of two farmers who got a sad fright on the occasion of Jenny's suicide. It was a fine moonlight evening, and as they were returning from the market to their homes in the neighbourhood of Strathmaglow, the clearness of their vision somewhat dimmed by the manner in which they had concluded the transactions of the day, they described their old acquaintance on the side of the road, but in such a position that they were not at all aware of what had happened. The weight of her body had bent down the branch of the tree from which she was dangling, so that her feet rested upon the ground, and she had all the appearance of being in a half-sitting posture. One of the men gave her a push with the butt-end of his whip, how nice, and called out, Stand up, Jenny Nettles! When the body swung back in a manner so awful as at once to convince them of the horrible truth and to throw them into such a state of consternation that they both galloped off, never daring to look back until they reached their own firesides and, as the people in that quarter say, had got into their beds between their wives and the wall. It then goes on to say what's happened to Jenny's jewellery where the earrings are on display in the possession of Mr. Fraser, Lepidary, South, <laughs> South Street, Andrew, South St. Andrew Street, Edinburgh, whose museum contains many curious antiquarian relics. I don't know if that's still there and if you'd like to make a p pilgrimage to go and see Jenny's earrings. But I thought it was rather an interesting story and rather, um, well, I suppose typical of their time and gender put by the members of the Bannatyne Club. I shall now sing you Jenny Nettles with no merit, uh, poetical or otherwise to recommend it.